Rahul, good having you, and thanks for joining us on Bloomberg Quinn. This is Neera Jair. Uh, what are your thoughts on what's happening within India currently and the investment climate? I know a lot of foreign, boy, foreign institutional investors have taken a seat off. They've probably looked at other investment avenues. But the last two or three days, the government is showing that every time we think that the markets may be overvalued and, and things may not be working well, there comes a move which is incidentally great for the markets as well. Uh, the recap being one such latest move. No, clearly, I think there has been a policy overdrive from the government and we saw government deliver on GST when nobody believed it and um, just when the economy was kind of a drifting because obviously uh, GST was bound to have its impact for a couple of quarters on the economy. We've had this big recap move. So clearly, uh, investors have been positively surprised by the government. For all these uh, people who are critical of the government saying government does only um, incremental reforms, government shown that it can bite the bullet and do the tough things which are beneficial from the country uh, from a medium term perspective. So clearly positive. Uh, look, I think India's underperformance to China and Korea has happened because those markets started from a low valuations. Um, they do well when um, global growth picks up and I think that continues. But our view is, look, six months, India may continue to underperform Korea or China. But if, if you're taking a three-year view, because the starting point is low in terms of the size of the economy for India compared to China, the returns are going to be nearly similar. And all these steps uh, put a path for a sustained recovery in the markets and the economic growth, basically, for next two, three-year perspective. Mm -hmm. I think your earlier uh, call, Rahul, was that you were looking at, at earnings recovery more on a quarterly basis as opposed to the annual basis because of the fast-paced nature of events that are happening in India. And I think you're looking out for demand recovery that yep. could be happening either in the September quarter or the OND quarter. Now, looking at what the FMCG yep. names have done, looking at what select auto names have done, how bullish are you on this recovery? And how would you play that in the first place? No. Okay. Clearly, clearly, it's a positive recovery. So you look at the consumer staple companies, you've seen talks of rural recovery happening, you've seen mixed improvement happening across the board, you've seen margin uplift happening. And this has happened only when probably part of the wholesaler chain has restocked. So you've not seen 100% restocking. And over the next couple of quarters, as your comps remain kind of a favorable because of a soft base, things should get better. I think a meaningful thing which is required for this rally to sustain is pickup of the investment cycle, which is where this whole thing of uh, recapitalization of banks is of paramount importance, which is where government kick-starting the infra spend is really important uh, from a long-term sustenance of these valuations. Okay. Uh uh, you, you know, you are uh, actually taking it very positively, the uh, steps that government has taken uh, for recapitalizing banks. How would you really like to play it? Are you going to buy more of PSU banks or more of financials or you would rather buy, you know, uh, various sectors that you would expect to get a boost up uh, because availability of credit? Okay, so I think it benefits the economy broadly. Uh, would be reluctant to chase PSU banks except SBI beyond one time book because all those structural issues of market share loss still remains. That market share loss is largely happening because the private banks not only were adequately capitalized but uh, were much tech savvy, were much uh, customer focused and had uh, better nimble management. So I think uh, once these banks go to one time book, people will again start focusing on the fundamentals. So, which is where I'm saying outside the more efficiently run public sector banks would be reluctant to chase anybody uh, beyond one time book i think clearly it creates an opportunity in other corporate banks uh, which were underperforming till now i think the disappointment investors have had is that every two quarters there's a new sector which turns bad so hopefully with uh, public sector banks being recapitalized central bank pushing um, all these banks to recognize the npas up front you'll see some of the sell offs happening so i think that's that's very important for re-rating of these corporate banks from here on that you see some of the stress assets in steel power come up for sale and hopefully they get sold at 50% uh, of uh, gain the value basically. Mm -hmm. But after recapitalization, are you taking your targets up in any segment, any sector, uh, any story that you really see in markets where you would like to increase your exposure? I think industrials clearly look positive. See, look, once once the banks get recapped, uh, once you see government kickstarting the infrastructure of CapEx, industrials is something which has not really performed from a three-year perspective. Globally also, what you look at is uh, China needs to reduce investment, but rest of the world needs to step up on, on investment. So you've seen good global CapEx cycle pick up slowly. The age of capital stock globally is old. So I think industrials look positive. Uh, some of these uh, metals look positive. And uh, again, A is a global uh, kind of a positive view. More 
more importantly, a lot of these metal companies had gone through these issues between 2012-13 when there was all these issues of go no go areas, environmental restrictions. Now what's happening because of that is they're seeing a strong volume ramp up. Um, so metals, industrials would be positive and we continue to maintain our overweights on financials. What one would do within that is move a bit of a weight from retail banks to corporate banks, but that's a little bit of a tinkering uh, which would happen in that space. Mm. Yeah, I, I think most people have uh, said that. Uh, the other, other question mark that came, uh, Rahul, and I'm just continuing with that theme before I move on to the ECB decision as well, is that a lot of people or some people uh, started saying that the high valuations into NBFCs was a result of the fact that there were no other financial investment options available and these guys were showing growth. Do you reckon that aside of uh, the retail focused banks to corporate focused banks, uh, money moving in that fashion, fashion is one such move. Money could move out of these really expensive NBFCs into some of the PSU banks. Would you be open to doing that? Look, what happens is, uh, as long as these NBFCs show growth, what you'll see a time correction happen, that obviously these valuations are expecting, uh, expensive. Um, 25 times one year forward earnings, uh, five times book is, is uh, really expensive. And when these companies don't have a CASA franchise, so what would happen is uh, they would go through a period of a little bit of a price correction, time correction. Like the way I said before, I'll take some money out of these NBFCs, put it in private sector corporate banks, rather than chase public sector banks beyond one time book. See, a lot of these uh, moves in public sector banks were priced um, in last two, three days. So the way we look at this is uh, you'll have some bit of a correction because all these banks have not fully recognized the NPAs. Uh, you've got more accounts uh, which are particularly in the telecom sector, which are likely to turn bad. So as market gets a reality check that look, all this is not going to happen with the magic wand, the spur of a moment thing, and it's going to be a long drawn out process, you'll get better entry points um, in the banking system, basically. So looks like you are not really optimistic on, uh, you know, an early resolution of NPAs. Uh, a lot of steps have actually been taken, but now, how, how do you really see it? Okay, you look at the steps. Look, we, we uh, most of these steps were taken early this year, and we are six months into it. Uh, yet we have not seen one or two cases being solved, uh, and those are simple steel uh, cases where uh, the global cycle uh, is looking upwards. So, so it's it's going to take its own while. See, very often what happens is markets tend to discount uh, things very early, and then as they go through their reality checks, they realize that actual execution is a lot more difficult uh, than one uh, envisaged before. Okay. Uh, one last question from my end, Rahul, and, and that's on commodities. I heard you mention about metals in a select way. Now, these are pockets which have had a substantial rally in the last 18-odd uh, months, but commodities seem to be holding up. What would your stance be? Okay, so I think uh, you've got to attribute the strong commodity outlook to two things. One is the seriousness China has about um, supply side reforms, which is the capacity cuts. Uh, look, we were skeptical of this uh, mid of last year. We thought this was typically like the usual China talk, which they've had a number of times over the years and uh, nothing beyond lip service. But the current regime has shown a lot more resolve to do these capacity uh, cuts and we see all all the more of same in last three to six months where all these environmental investors, uh, inspectors have gone out and fanned to um, smaller districts where they've cut capacities, steel, aluminum, etc. So China, which was a big kind of a deflationary uh, force in global commodity kind of a eases a bit and on top of that you've seen a global demand revival and I think the good thing for some of these Indian players is uh, they, they are backward integrated, they've got volume growth and unlike their regional players uh, which are trading at six, seven times EVA better, these guys are trading at three to four times EVA better. So there's a valuation catch up, there is strong volume growth and I think that's where a money making opportunity is still for metals. So historically we've never been uh, positive metals but clearly uh, there is an upcycle uh, in the works here. And what's your call on global liquidity? Uh, well, FIIs have not really been positive uh, for last six months. How do you see it going forward towards the end of this fiscal? So you'll get a, a bit of a tightening of global liquidity as, as Fed kind of a contracts the balance sheet. But look, as, as what ECB said uh, yesterday, uh, the, the uh, tapering is going to be much lower than expected. So global liquidity tightens. Uh, but what happens is for next 12, 18 months, the focus would be on the beginning of the investment cycle. Should you get the tax cuts, 
from US which which spur uh, uh, gain uh, fresh capital investments that would be something which market would be positive on so inflation is coming back um, you look across businesses outlooks are uh, is rosy so I think what happens is you play through this virtuous cycle of capital investments higher wage growth and probably two years later when central banks think that uh, the economies are overheating that's the time to be worried about equities but I, I, I think things are going to be fairly comfortable for next 12 18 months you'll get these pockets which one is going through now where markets correct on, on these fears of central banks tightening. Uh, but look, we are still in the early stage of recovery. Well, let's hope uh, that it lasts, though. Uh, but Rahul, great having you. Thanks much for taking the time out and speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. Look forward to having you more often.